What's going on, everybody? It's Achilles LBT coming at you with the second half of my best heals video for Karajim the Monk. Hopefully, you enjoyed the first half of the video. Tried to keep it as brief as I could. Obviously, I never succeed on doing that. But, thankfully, it looks like we have a viable, normal uh, team composition. Well, I wouldn't say viable or normal, but... There's enough bodies to heal. So at level one, we're going to be going insight. And again, if you want to hear about this build in, in full detail, you can go back to the first half if you haven't seen it already. But this will just be running through the build and showcasing it more than anything. And we are already off to a fantastic start with two players that are AFK, which is awesome. So going over the team composition, friendly team is Azebo, myself, Kairazim, Brightwing. Johanna and Zeratul against the Nova, Sylvanas, Karazim, Diablo, and Abathur. Let's get ahead. Let's just go ahead and back this bitch up. Alright. We'll see. See if we can make the best of this. This is already. And the two AFK players decide to show up to the same exact lane, which is fantastic. It's exactly what you want them doing. And we definitely want our Brightwing by, by herself on the bottom lane as well. Like, this is already just going swell <laughs> but we're not going to make fun of our teammates at all we are going to type at our team teammates in a second here if they don't fucking switch out hold on like sometimes people just don't don't notice things i don't know and watch it be watch it be zara watch zara go bottom or watch nobody go bottom. That's interesting. That, that's that's another way to go about it. And again, you will see a lot of what I just did, but since I'm not going for a damage build, it won't be particularly effective at bursting people down. It won't be chop liver either, but it definitely, definitely won't be on par with like a melee assassin or anything like that. Because again, we are going for a healing build. And it's one thing that I wasn't able to point out in the last video. When you see this symbol underneath a teammate, that means they're in range of your heal. So it's just something to keep an eye out for. Let's make sure our mic is not muted. All right. Let's get Dibbles out of here. Oh, shit. That's bad. That's why you don't do that, kids. <laughs> definitely, definitely why you don't do that. I just went from having comfortable full health to not so comfortable. But we'll be all right. We'll be okay. They had, I already forgot they had a Nova. And we were able to reach level 4 first. Thankfully, the soaking's going alright. So at level 4, you want to pick up Healing Ward. Again, it's not something that's going to be like something that changes the swing of the, uh, of the battle like by itself. But it is a helping hand as far as giving you another means to heal your teammates. Because, again, the Breath of Heaven is not going to be super viable from the onset. It's something that you're going to have to take a little time to put some work into before it really, really starts to shine. Which at level 7 you'll really start to see what kind of healing ability Karajim actually has. So, we are going to actually be in a bad position here. I'm actually completely isolated from my teammates. The enemy team's actually doing a really good job of cutting me off right now. So we are going to make our way back to our bright one, just to try and keep her alive a little bit. And as I mentioned in the last video, I really only use my, my Radiant Dash just to get to my teammates. We are going to throw down our healing ward right here in the back. Somewhere where the enemy team may not notice it. And again, you want to try and stay as clumped up with your teammates as possible when you're using your W ability. We were, able, we, we were successfully able to push back the enemy team. That was actually pretty good. That was, that was actually very well done. And again, you saw it right there that the, the healing ward is not something that's going to be tremendous on the healing side of things. But it definitely will do the job. It is another way to keep your, your team in the fight. And that's really all you need it for. It's not something you need to like completely pull people out of the dumps. Like if they're, if they're close to death or anything like that. It's not, it's not that kind of ability. You're really just using it to try and keep everybody still going. Alright. Good to know. We're not actually going to be attempting to kill this Diablo in the slightest bit, or even burst him down. I'm really just trying to soak XP. Let him use his abilities all he wants. You see, our, our healing is at least enough to kind of negate all of that damage, mitigate it. 
quite a bit. Not worried about Diablo in the slightest bit. So at level 7, we're going to be picking Echo of Heaven. This is where our healing, healing ability, healing viability rather, is going to start to take off now. Because now the, the W ability will be going off twice instead of once. The second time it goes off for half the amount of healing, but it still gets the job done because you still get that movement speed all the same. And we are actually going to be a little bit isolated from, from, from our friendlies right now. Diablo surprisingly took quite a bit of damage considering that I'm, uh, that I'm going for a healing build. We are going to actually try and make a play on the enemy monk, which we successfully do. And again, you still want to you still want to keep keep very close to your teammates, even with the uh, the added burst. We are going to try and heal our Zerodal quite a bit, and we're going to put down the healing ward right here, right close to the tribute. Anybody that watched my old Malfurion video, I still have the same rule like in place. Um, even as a Karajim, you don't want to be the one to jump on the tribute to, to collect it. You are still a healer. It is not necessarily the best play in the world to put yourself in a position where you're not able to do any kind of healing whatsoever. And you notice our mana bar is going back up. Just to kind of showcase what I was talking about earlier, you get two free charges on this. You see the mana bar going up whenever you use your, uh, I forgot what it's called, Deadly Reach. I always forget that it's named after Reach because the speed the speed boost is a lot more noticeable than the Reach is. We are just going to mitigate that a little bit with an early heal. See, we are able to burst him down quite effectively. That was actually a little bit of a surprise. Zeridal could actually make a play on him if he actually just waits a little while longer. But it's not, it's not imperative. It's really not. See, the enemy Karazine went for a shield build, sort of. We are just going to back off. You see the movement speed from, from the heal. And again, the second burst gets us almost all the way back to our full health. Again, I actually missed the Q on the tribute. That's a first. I'm on my way now, but I am definitely going to be hella late. The good news is the other Karajim missed the memo as well. And it actually looks like the friendly team is going to be able to get it no problem. That, 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 that makes me feel a lot better. Because I definitely, definitely missed out on that big time. We are going to help to put the kill on, on that Diablo right there. I'm going to stay back because I do want to heal my teammates some more and keep them in the fight. Again, this is a healing build, not a damage build. So everything is going to be tailor-made and focused towards healing and keeping my teammates going. Like, plain and simple, I will turn down opportunities to go for kills if I, if I have another opportunity to save a teammate's life instead. But that's just how I play. Gonna burst in closer to our Johanna and keep her healed. Again, if you've seen my, my Malfarian video, I do not wait to do my job. I feel like it's your job to keep your teammates as close to full health as possible. Especially, like, you see my mana bar is almost not even moving anymore. So mana is definitely not an issue, and that's exactly why I choose that talent. That's why I choose Insight over Transcendence. You can make up for You can heal your teammates just fine with your W ability if you build it up properly. Your mana, on the other hand, with Transcendence won't, will still be an issue. Gonna put a little more damage on the enemy monk and just back up. It'd be interesting to see how, with how much, uh, how much healing we finish with, considering that there's a Brightwing on the team as well. Let's see what's going on over here. Oh, have a, might have a slight opportunity for, uh, for Divine Palm here. Depending. We actually tried to put our palm on our teammate right there. Did not succeed in doing so. I am ready actually to put it on, on our Zeratul though if need be. But I'm going to just draw, draw the enemy team away from him because I don't want to follow somebody that's cloaked. And we make it back to our Nazebo. Just fine. And again, we're doing 370 per heal on our initial burst, which is definitely more than viable. We are going to try and make a play for the Sylvanas right there, but we do not succeed. We can make a play for the Diablo as well. Also won't succeed on that. That was a lucky guess. I'm not even going to lie. <laughs> I really was not sure which one was the real Nova right there. We definitely made a lucky guess right there and got the real Nova. 
just gonna step out of the way. Not in time, unfortunately. But we are gonna be picking uh, Relentless at level 13. Again, this is the this is a bit of a shaky talent level because there really isn't like a hardcore amount of options for a healing variant. But we definitely have one or two one or two talents that can make do. And notice my positioning at all times. At all times, like I'm trying to stay as close to my teammates as possible. And I'm literally like when I when I play as a healer, I literally spend the entire time just watching my teammates health. We are going to use a palm on our Johanna, and she does get killed, so we get full value out of that ult. Very very good play by our by our tank right there. We are going to put down a healing ward right now to try and help me to keep Johanna alive. You see how much health she gets back from from one W. It's there's no question that if you build it the right way that Breath of Heaven is definitely a viable healing talent. Or healing ability, rather. So I'll just do a brief check. I haven't checked all game. We're doing 34,000 healing right now compared to Brightwing doing 16. 21 from the enemy monk. It's not, it's not really close right now. Like, again, the build itself, it does the job. It, it does a great job of keeping your teammates healthy. Keeping them in the fight. This is not necessarily the best play by me, but I don't want to be in the lane not doing anything. And really the only thing I can do in the middle lane is soak XP right now to try and stay ahead of the enemy team. But I'm going to back away. Looks like I backed away on time with the Diablo showing up right there. And we're going to make our way over to Zebo. Alright, this time, uh, this time I did notice the... Uh, the tribute. I really don't have that issue at all. Like that's the first time I've missed a tribute in in months, really. That was actually a very very good series of abilities the enemy team just put out right there. We might not be able to get this Diablo here. Our Zebo should put down the wall. We are gonna hit him with a palm, and again he does die, so he comes right back. We're just going to keep our teammate in the fight. And just move right back to our tank. No need to chase. Absolutely no need to chase. We are going to put down our healing ward right there to try and help out a little bit. And stay behind our tank. We are actually in a position where we can be taken out. I am actually going to back up completely. I'm not sure what's taking so long for our teammates to spawn up. They did actually, th that's huge. They took out that fucking, they took out the fountain before I could get to it, which makes me have to push back that much further. And the enemy team was actually able to pick up the tribute that time. We are going to heal our Johanna, though, on time. And make a play for this Nova. A little too overextended play right there. Very, very good job by our Zeridal. So at level 16, we're going to be picking Soothing Breeze. This is now going to give us a cleanse-like option for our base healing, which again goes off twice, so that counts as two cleanses technically. So factor in how much healing we're doing right now. Abathur was right there. Wow, that's a crazy spot for him to be hiding at. Crazy spot for him to be hiding at. Let's check the bush and make sure he's not still hiding close by. I'm gonna ping for help here. We do have our bright wing on sight. Good shield on our Zeridal. And here comes the enemy team right there. I'm going to put down our healing ward ahead of time and try to burst down this Diablo, which we succeed in doing. And we're just trying to stay in the middle of the team right now and just keep them all good to go. I'm going to fall back to my tank, my tank friend over here. Everything going good. This is actually not a good play right here at all. Like, just if I would have ran up, I mean, not so much like what I'm doing now. But I would have openly, I would have gotten myself basically cut off right there if I kept running forward. Again, we're going to use our dash to just get in, get in range of our teammates and do our best to heal them. Enemy Monk does use a Divine Palm on himself, which I kind of feel like doesn't really do much. If, if a Monk is using it on himself, he's not necessarily hard to take out. Like, he, he's... He's not a tanky character, per se, so it's like if you use a palm on yourself, that doesn't change. You're still just as easy to take out. I'm going to burst back to our teammates over here. 
They are going to try and take me out, but that's a very good zombie wall by our Nazebo, and we are going to easily burst down Diablo. There is a noticeable difference if you go for a healer's build or a... Uh, we are going to try to take some of those shots. Did not succeed, but at the very least, our teammate did not die. See, 500 healing now per, per burst, which is very, very good. This is, this is basically all you have to do is just stay in the middle of your team. We're going to put down a healing ward here for our Zeridal. We don't want to lose. We don't want to lose our DPS here. You want to stay clumped up with your teammates as much as possible and just keep spamming your W. And again, the insight keeps you from losing your mana. I'm not going to lie. Our Zeridal got burst down faster than I thought he would. And again, the monk uses the Vine Palm on himself. Gonna queue up retreat here because there's really no point to staying. I would have had to jump into that. If I wanted to use my Divine Palm, I would have had to jump into the entire team right there to do it. Definitely wouldn't have been the best play. I'm not sure why our tank elected to split push by themselves, but uh, definitely not the smartest play. And we could have used... Uh, could have used that tank support in that in that other team fight we were just into right there. 548 per burst heal right there. And level 20, we're gonna go we're gonna go peaceful repose so that we can sh we can fire our uh, fire off our heroic ability a lot more often. Again, if you miss the window for your teammate to die, the cooldown is reduced to five seconds instead of 60, so it's not so bad. We're gonna stay with our bright wing over here. Try and help her take out that camp. It's worth noting that even though this is a healing build, the monk's damage is still not that bad at all. Like he doesn't he doesn't completely completely hit like weak, even if you're not going for a damage build. So just factor that in if you are going for a damage build, how much harder he'd be hitting. We're going to make our way down to our teammates right here because it's a big team fight going down here and we don't want to lose anybody. We are going to actually rotate backwards now. Enemy team was successful in getting that, getting the boss right there, which is unfortunate. But we will, it looks like we will pick up two of their, two of theirs right there in, in exchange. We're going to just heal right now to give our, give ourselves a little bit of a burst. And just body block the monk. Easy kill. Again, there, the enemy Karajim seems content to keep using the keep using Divine Palm on himself, but it really doesn't have the desired effect when we can just easily burst him down again. Like it's it it almost seems like a waste. Like you don't want to pick and choose who you use Divine Palm on, but obviously the best person to use a Divine Palm on is a tank and we actually are going to get our teammates out of that again we have soothing breeze so we can get rid of that no problem and make our way over to our to our other teammates who should have no problem getting that actually going to queue up for a boss because we need to answer right now and there's still two teammates down now it's about to be one zerital did find abathur for a second but nobody seems to want to go so we're gonna we're gonna scrap that idea we're going to scrap that idea in favor of pushing a lane that our boss would do for us if we actually had one. Just to put that in perspective. Our Johanna seems really, really, really uh, hell-bent on doing it up on the siege front. Which is not necessarily, a, I guess, a bad thing, but... I don't know. It, she, could be, she could be put to better use, in my opinion. Need to back the fuck up. That's a no-win situation right there. Just gonna hang out a little bit just in case. All right, no, no, no problem. The gods are in all we are actually away from that, from that little gathering right there. So if something happens, that's very, very unfortunate. We are gonna try and burst down this Diablo. We were able to get off one heal. Now, now the help finally shows. 
I'm gonna put down the healing ward. We are gonna dash into Sylvanas to take her out, no problem. And heal our teammates again. 285 on the second heal. And we have a 20 kill streak going. Awesome. Our Johanna seems really hell bent on on putting in siege work. It's very interesting. I feel like Zeridal is almost a tank of the team right now. Like I see him frontlining on every team fight, but I almost never see the Johanna. Very interesting. Taking an update at our healing. Look at that, 82k right now, 82,000 healing. Way ahead of everybody else, as far as I can see. We don't actually have, this is exactly when I would actually elect to throw down a healing ward as well. Which we are about to get it back, so. Just gonna place it right behind us. Again, it's a helping hand. Doing buck 51 every time we land that right there. And we're gonna get our Zerodal out of that. Again, your W with this build is gonna be really, 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 really up there. I can't really overstress how handy your W becomes if you build it this way. Abathur's right here. Get the slug. Get the slug. Get him. Oh my god, how is nobody here? Oh, I gotta let it go. That's unfortunate. And we are gonna try and keep our Zeridal in the fight. He's too far right now. Alright, we got back in. We are going to take out Diablo, and we're going to we're going to palm our Brightwing, which actually might have been a mistake. We got to wait a few seconds before we're able to heal again. Our Johanna is not in on any of these fights. I'm not sure if anybody else is noticing this, but this could actually kind of cost us a little bit here. We are going to use a divine palm on ourselves. Again, the same rules apply for me as the other monk, only I ran away. I did not choose to stand there and fight. I'm not seeing her there. Like, I'm just, maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm an asshole. I'll see this on the VOD, and I'll see something different. But it seems like she's not there at all. I don't know. I, I can't really... I guess openly comment. It's not that big of a deal when you factor in that our, the boss that we that we got earlier did a very very good amount of damage on the. Uh, <laughs> oh, that was rude. <laughs> did a very very good amount of damage on the core, but still, these games can turn like it's 22 to 22 on the leveling right now. These games can just turn just as fast the other way. I actually took a very very hefty amount of damage right there. We are going to grab this tribute, though, as a team. Because we will let we will get a curse with this one at least, so it won't be so bad. All right. I guess they're going to force me to do it. They're going to burst down this clone. And that might be the real one right there. Have at her. <laughs> All right. Just need to put something together here. Johanna was already, again, I, I don't know where she was, but I just looked down now. She was already at the front of the pack, charging in. I don't know. <laughs> I don't get it. Johanna is on free week right now, so maybe it's not the most experienced Johanna user. But this should be game right here. Curious to see what kind of numbers we finish with on the healing. 103k. 24-0. Build works, especially if you pay attention to, you pay attention to your job first and foremost, and don't get caught up because I I do want to stress that this is not necessarily a gripe with this hero, but Karajim is so much fun to use that you can get caught up trying to just get into like fights and like trading shots basically because he's hand to hand, so it's like how could you not have fun like throwing punches and kicks and stuff like that? But even as especially as a healing build. You have to take care of your first job, which is keeping your teammates in the fight. As you see, 
103k, 103,000 healing done. Definitely did my job. I had a lot more hero damage and siege damage than I was planning to. If you see my other videos, you know I've talked about this where I tend to not have a lot on either front and I just keep my attention towards um, healing. But Karajim is a little bit of a special case because at the very least you have to fight to use to, to take advantage of your trait. And that's how we were always like in a position where we never had problem with mana. It was never an issue or anything like that. And honestly... Uh, I, I did a, I landed maybe two or three of my divine palms that game, which is actually the first time I've done that. So that was actually a little bit fortunate as well. But at the same time, I missed a few of them as well. That could have kept my teammates in the fight. It did help that we at least had like one, two or three guys that knew what they were doing. So at least you're keeping people alive that are actually taking advantage of the fact that you're keeping them alive. And that's basically all I have to say about that. Again, the healing total speaks for itself. Like, if you want to know how viable Karazim is, I just did that with another healer on the team. Like, not even as a soul healer, and I put up 103. So that should just that should just speak volumes. If you build them a certain way and you pay attention, you'll get the results. So one last time wrapping up the build. At level 1, you want to go Insight to get your mana back with every third basic attack. At level 4, you want to go Healing Ward. Again, it's not a game-changing talent or anything like that, but it's just a little bit of a helping hand, just a little nudge to keep your teammates in the fight with in case of an emergency. At level 7, you want to go Echo of Heaven. This is exactly what turns your base healing ability into a T1 base healing ability. Like, this is exactly what pushes it to the next level where you get a second burst of healing that does half the amount of healing as the original. But altogether, as long as your positioning is on point, you can get all of that healing done on the same targets. And again, if your positioning with Karajim is everything. Like, it's just as important as paying attention to your teammates' health bars. It's extremely important if you want to get the most out of this hero you have to be on top of your positioning at level 10 you want to go divine palm as a means to heal your teammates from 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 dying like you get they get a very very respectable amount of healing but again as you saw in this video you want to be wary if you're using Karajin, you want to be wary about using it on yourself because you're not hard to burst down to begin with you're not going to be hard to burst down the second time after you use the divine palm on yourself so just be mindful of that and try to use it on on your teammates as opposed to using it on yourself Level 13, again, this is open for interpretation. If you want to go Quicksilver, go Quicksilver. It's a very, very good talent. Me, personally, I go for Relentless so that any, any kind of crowd control used on me gets cut in half right away, and I have more openings to do my job. At level 16, you want to go Soothing Breeze. This is what adds the Cleanse-like ability to your base healing, which we'll be using twice. So, again, not only do you heal twice, you give the movement speed twice, and you get the cleanse ability twice with this with this ability. So Soothing Breeze definitely is the icing on the cake of your healing ability, and really you can get your team through anything with this. And finally, at level 20 is when you add the icing on the cake of the Divine Palm. It reduces the cooldown to 5 seconds if a hero does not die after the ability is casted on them. Basically gives you a lot more free reign to, to, to cast this without the pressure of putting it on somebody that may or may not understand that they have to get aggressive like if they don't die at least you're only waiting five seconds so you're not you're not as hesitant to throw this out there for a teammate so again that's the build hopefully you enjoyed the video again the number speaks for itself you you basically just saw how it could work karajim is definitely definitely a viable support hero by himself if you build him that way and, and, and play a certain way. So he's definitely, definitely viable right up there with everybody else that you could think of that's T1. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Again, if you only watch this video and you want like a precise details on why I picked everything that I picked, the first half of the video is right there, but it, it's definitely, definitely not required. Obviously, you saw what it just does. I appreciate the support as always. This is Achilles LBT. That's Achilles with the Z. Remember it.